All right, everybody, and welcome to another whatever the hell this thing is. So, um, little known fact, uh, back in the early 90s, uh, John Carmack and co. actually uh, went to speak to uh, Ken Williams, the owner of Sierra Online, about purchasing id. This was after the release of Wolfenstein, but before the release of the all-important Doom. Well, Ken Williams uh, passed on buying id, and that chapter of, of history was closed forever. But this game apparently comes from some alternate dimension where uh, id and Sierra were part of the same company. This is uh, a Quest for Glory 4 mod for Hexen, a mid-90s first-person shooter game. You know, this is really the kind of thing that the internet exists for. You know, forget your, your Facebooks and your Twitters and your your porn. I mean, that's for that too, but that, we're getting this racket here. This is the kind of thing the internet was made for. Stupid shit that doesn't need to exist, but I, I'm very glad that it does. This is a mod someone made for Hexen that features Quest for Glory 4 and Quest for Glory 4 assets. And we're going to be having a look at it today. Um, this is not going to be a let's play in the traditional sense. I don't really have a commitment to finishing this. The, the mod itself is free. You can pick up Hexen for like 10 bucks if you don't own it already. Um, on GOG and possibly Steam, I don't really know. You can get it pretty easy though. It's not hard to come across. And the mod is, of course, free. We're going to be having a little look at it and just... Just enjoying its majesty. The fact that this exists. And you know I guys, you know I love you guys, because I'm actually not using my for real keyboard today. I'm using, I dug out a membrane keyboard, so you wouldn't have to listen to the obnoxiousness of my uh, mechanical keyboards, clickety clacks. We're going to go into the um, menu here, and as, you, as in Hexen, you can pick from your character's uh, classes here. I'm going to go with the wizard, because I believe in projectile weapons, and uh, I played a wizard in the Quest for Glory Let's Play. So we're going to continue that tradition. I'm going to play on uh, Bringeth Them Oneth, because uh, I'm not that good, but I'm not that terrible either. <clears throat> oh, and you'll also get the chance to hear me uh, read some of the narrations that I didn't read in the actual Quest for Glory 4 Let's Play. And if you want me to get on with it, uh, that's too bad. It's just my video. Have fun. You awaken from nightmares of flying and falling. You find yourself in this strange place, the only illumination an eerie green glow. All you have are the clothes and armor on your back. This leaves you with four burning questions. Where are you? How did you get here? Who brought you here? And how in blazes can you get out of here? No, make that five burning questions. What city did your luggage end up in this time? Ah, very fun. So I have played a little bit of this. I'm not going in completely blind here, but uh, I don't know who made this mod. I should have looked up the name and had it ready, but I'm... I mean, you don't come here for high quality, people. You should know that already. They have painstakingly remade some of the areas in Quest for Glory in 3D, and it is it is wonderful. We have the sound effects from the game when you cast... Uh, I believe this is um, Frostbite that we're casting here by default. The shit explodes. It's great. It's it's terrific. It really is. Beyond yonder sphincter lies danger. Let us explore. And they use the the door sound effects from the game too, which is honestly, it's quite precious. It really is. We got a quartz flask. Uh, as um, in Hexen, you can well in the Z Doom version of Hexen anyway. You can use items by pressing Enter. So we have a uh, health potions. Is that an enemy? Well, I've blasted it many a times and it hasn't died, so I'm going to say no. So if you played a fighter, or rather the paladin, you would have to come in and manually bash these guys with your sword. And uh, nobody has time for that. We're going to use projectile weapons, and we don't have limited mana. It's, it's really what every wizard dreams of. I'm sure when the Coles designed Quest for Glory, they were thinking it should have been a first-person shooter. Probably not, but, uh... This is really just, uh... This is really just 
cool stuff right here. As you can see, they recreated the uh, the tightrope here, and they got the tentacles from. Uh, I think that's supposed to be the last boyar, even though its tentacles look way bigger when you first encounter it than when you encounter it later in the game. By the way, I'm gonna spoil the game. Um, really, if your first introduction to Quest for Glory is a Hexen mod, I don't know. <laughs> this probably isn't your video. <laughs> Moving on. There's some really cool stuff here. Like I said, it's super neat that they recreated the uh, areas from the game in 3D. And we can go through the little area transition here. You slip through the mouth of the cave, just in time to be to avoid being crushed by its closing jaws. Whew. As the cave mouth closes behind you, you feel a strange warning tingle. There is danger here, although its source is not immediately clear. Rocks have formed islands within the toxic, icky, greasy, grimy goo flowing through the area. You think you can see someone ahead in the mist. And you can shoot the little, uh, portrait they got going on here. You know, I didn't look at this last time. Eh, look, okay, maybe that's not the best asset I've ever seen in my life, but whatever. We're moving on. Katrina, how you doing? You're alive! Only one person has ever walked away from there before. Who are you? How did you get here? These are the same questions from the introduction. There are so many questions I want to ask you, but I have to get home quickly. It's so dangerous out at night in Mordavia. The town is due north of here. Be careful. There are many bad things wandering around. Good luck. Oh, uh, by the way, my name is Katrina. I hope we'll meet again sometime. <laughs> Farewell. And we have a, a very, um, lots of saturation going on here. Alright, and you actually, if you run into her again, she will talk to you again. I have played a little bit of this. I haven't played all the way through, I really don't know how long it is. It's another reason why I'm not committing to this being an actual, for real, let's play. But I did want to show it off. And like I said, you um, if you enjoy these kind of games, these um, Doom-like first-person shooters, you really should check this out and just honestly, play Brutal Doom, it's pretty great too. Ah, the Squid Stone. A giant phallic monument out here. This is actually far more impressive than it is in the original game. And they even put in the bonsai bush. Uh, you can't get it, but they put it in there, and it's the thought that counts. That's what I say when I don't buy people gifts. The heavy odor of decay overwhelms your senses and makes you feel slightly nauseated as you survey this gloomy swamp. You see strange floating coruscating balls of light, as well as the decayed remains of human arms clawing out of the swamp, trying to dag you, drag you down to share their doom. You consider heading north of the town Katrina spoke of, but decide to investigate these evil swamps for a little while first. You'd best stick to the islands. So in the actual game, of course, you can go into the swamp as soon as you get out of the cave and get the, uh, the scroll as soon as you can. It's not really uh, canonical to do so, but you can do it. And we're fighting Chernovies already. We got some more enemies to deal with. I'm gonna go over here and grab some health potions because I'm probably gonna need it. I didn't say I was any good at games. Did it just boost me out of the swamp? Okay. So they actually made the entire swamp into a level, which is really cool. And I believe this uses the uh, version of the music from Aubrey Hedges. I think I said his name right. Probably not. You can laugh at me in the comments. It's fine. It uses the version from his website. So it's actually a little bit better than the music you would normally get while playing the game. Even if you have like an MP32 or something. Sounds really good. Alright. Can we jump? We can indeed. We're really not taking a whole lot of damage going on there. Let's go ahead and drink a health potion here. Make Get one step closer or further from death, I should say. Oh, and we got a replacement right over here. Oh, how nice. There's something around here. See, this is why I don't want to... Oh, uh, boss music. So I will say, um, what I have seen of this mod, it does use some of the regular enemy sprites as bosses quite a few times. 
And by quite a few, I mean the two that I actually noticed. There's still one guy left over here. Ah, uh, I think we got him. Alright, I think we're good, kids. And we will get our first secondary weapon. The swamp is filled with Chernovi! Dread Wizards of the Dark One. They seem to be guarding a large tombstone. You dispatch them as quickly as possible and open the tombstone. Inside, you find a new weapon, a health potion, a mana potion, and a damp but readable scroll from its depths. It's, one, it's the Dark One's Bone Ritual. You see another exit out of the swamp in the forest. So, we actually got another spell here, and it's basically a magical shotgun. It's terrific. I said it already- oh, we saw that already. I said it already, but this is the thing the internet was made for. You're in the <coughs> Sorry. Was just, uh, choking on some semen there. Um, you are in the southwestern corner of a beautiful forest. Dank mists rise from the dismal swamp behind you to the south. Though it's through the trees, you can barely glimpse a tinkling brook in the east, winding its way through the forest into a lovely wake to the west. That's great. Alright. We have the, uh, the lake theme going on here. Ribbits. They're not nice. I should have known that, but he was just sitting there looking all friendly like. These guys are actually a little bit hard to hit. Oh, we got a Necrotar coming over here. Is this not the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life? I mean, you're watching my channel, so I don't imagine your life's that great, but imagine. This has to be one of the coolest. <laughs> this is kind of the coolest things I've ever seen, I'll give you that. It's okay. We, oh, those guys sneak up on you. They just blend in with the scenery, even though I should know better. This actually seems like a higher quality sprite than what's in the actual game. I don't know if he uh, doctored it up or whatever, but uh, it looks pretty good, I got to say. Isn't this just the coolest? No, oh, not today, friend. I picked a cheesy ranged class. Just like playing the actual game, uh, for that matter. I mean, really, um, the combat is kind of the worst part of the Quest for Glory series, so you pick the wizard if you don't want to have to deal with it as much. You can just spam fireball most of the game. Or most of the series, actually, not just this game. Alright, let us continue on this way. More damnable rabbits. So I was actually kind of bored um, this past week. I uh, started playing around with Brutal Doom on a lark, and I ended up playing it for like three hours. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It actually uh, modded to play a little bit more like the modern Doom games, uh, with some kind of some quality of life features that you would kind of expect from a modern shooter. But it doesn't lose the classic feel of it. Another thing I really recommend if you like that kind of thing. You stand on the shores of a vast and beautiful Bew Mountain Lake. To the north lies more pine forest, and to the south, the lake grinds into a dark and dismal swamp. Or drains, sorry. You have a strange, disquieting feeling along with a sense of sorrow, longing, and unfulfilled desires as you near the lake. The briny lake seems to draw you towards it. Then you see her, the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. She has lovely, long, green hair, although your eyes tend to focus a little bit lower than that. Hello, it's the Bratoka. Hello there, I'm the Rizalka. Would you take my hand and help me? It's so cold here in the lake. Please come and hold me and help me be warm again. So I mean, in the actual, in the actual game, she kills. Oh, I, can I save? Yeah, 
We're not we won't save Scummit. Oh she will hurt you. Nice touch. So I uh, don't know if there's any secrets here to find. Uh, like I said, I only played through this a little bit last time. I don't think you can actually go across the lake here, but it is a nice touch. And now we're in another forested area. At first I thought we were uh, going in circles, but uh, this is actually the right way to go. Another, if you like more 90s games because you like living in the past, I also heartily recommend the Beelzebub mod for Diablo 1. If you're a sucker for that uh, gothic horror look that Diablo 1 has, which I know I am, that uh, definitely adds some quality of life features to that game. It is also a free mod, and you can pick up Diablo for like 10 bucks on GOG if you need a copy of it. Uh, the Diablo 2 remake is also pretty good. I still like Diablo 1 a little bit better because I'm a weirdo like that. Oh, we got Wyverns for the first time! Or is it Wyverns? I say Wyvern because that sounds a lot cooler to me. Alright, Mordavi is a lot more dangerous than I remember. This place is truly a hellscape. You are in the northwest. North, uh, you are in the northwest corner of the forest. You can see a badly overgrown road that once led to the east. The road north is blocked by a heavy gate supported by two tall towers. But you can see it winding its way perilously across a treacherous gorge to a grim but majestic castle afar in the distance. In the right side tower, you can see the gatekeeper, a gaunt, tired-looking man with deep-set eyes that stare intelligently at you. Ah, here we are. This is really nice. Like, really. It's super cool to be able to walk around the world of Quest for Glory in 3D. How you doing, Boris? Welcome to Mordavia. It's nice to have some fresh blood around here. We so seldomly see strangers. I am Boris Stovich, and this is the gate to Borgov Castle. You can see it in the distance beyond here. I am here to make certain only welcome guests of the master may enter through the gate. I am not certain who lives in the castle other than the master, the strange foreigner, the master's daughter, and some scary guards. <laughs> because beyond that, I really can't say. Thanks, Boris. You've been a great help. Yeah, we're just going to walk on through here. I am afraid I cannot allow you to do that. Please stop. Okay, we get the point. I'm not reading all that. You get the point. Alright, so now we have to head on towards old scenic Mordavia. We have yet another forested map here. This actually reminds me of, um... I'm gonna have one of those pointless conversations like I normally do. There was this other shooter game that I want to say predated Doom, because it had a lot more primitive graphics. And you were playing a wizard in that game, and you were going around in a graveyard, and it was... Kind of like that, you had uh, attacks like this, and it creeped me out as a kid. I got it on some shareware disc. Oh yeah, boss music is playing it. Please tell me that's not the boss. Okay. We need something a little more dramatic than that. Hey buddy, how you doing? We got the shotgun spell for, you, for that. The perfect opportunity. Ooh, that works good. So the shotgun spell actually does use mana, as you can see. Only three apiece, but still. We'll try to conserve it a little bit. Are we done here? I think we're done here. You follow the old overgrown western road until it meets another road heading north that has seen considerably more traffic. You can see cultivated fields and the walls of a town to the north. This must be the town of Mordavia, Katrina and the Gatekeeper spoke of. Oh, I'm sure the magic-hating people of Mordavia will love me in this game. I think this is a different road other than the one we need to go down, but you know, we're gonna hunt for some secrets and stuff. Alright, we can't go that way. And how about this way? Nada. All roads lead to Mordavia, as they say. They don't really say that. 
In fact, I might be the first person in history to have ever said that. Alright, these are all dead ends. Okay, I don't know if I pointed this out in the actual LP, but that always looked like some dude hiding in the bushes right there. Like, see off to the left side there? Especially if you get far enough away, like it would be in the game. Looks like some dude hiding in the bushes. I'm glad we shared that moment together. Alright, we'll go to Mordavia like the game wants us to. No more dicking around. The town gates, made of massive oak logs, are currently wide open. Twin towers stand above the town wall like silent massive sentinels over the gate. An arched stone bridge provides a path over the gully to the gate. Tall shucks of corn have been harvested and wait to be stored for the winter. The villages have erected scarecrows to keep the birds away from them. Well, that's good for them. We're all very proud. This seems like it took a lot of effort. I don't know if these are recycled assets or not, but regardless, they look really good. I like this. Oh, we got some fucking, um, some Ocarina of Time shit going on over here. We got the, the anus of doom in the sky. That is most unfortunate. So in the actual game, there's a secret passageway that leads into the Thieves' Guild, but I don't think that's, that's gonna be... Sounds like me beating off. Moving on. Okay, we'll go to the town. A familiar sense of peace and harmony fills you as you look around here. The smell of sweet flowers reminds you of a run of species Spielberg. Your eyes are drawn to the wizards of staff, blah 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 blah. It's nice. Alright, we get the point. I heard rats, I don't like rats. I want to steal her staff. It has like some cool. I got like a, a sniper rifle bolt or something. You! How did you get here? Why are you here? Few strangers come to Mordavia. I am the Burgermeister. It's my job to know everyone and everything that goes on here. What? You walked out of that cave alive? Tell me no more lies. This is the town of Mordavia. There's an inn and a shop and some other stuff. It does a weird, like, paraphrasal of the actual lines from the game. I always thought this guy looked like, uh, the hero. I don't remember there being pigs in Mordavia. What are you looking at, stranger? It's mine, I tell you. My own. My precious. No, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I... <laughs> I want to keep shooting the pigs. It feels like the kind of thing you'd be punished for. That's a horse. You know, there was always something really kind of uncanny about 2D sprites like this in these old games, how they just perfectly follow you everywhere. I think, I mean, PS2, or sorry, not PS2, PS1 horror is actually kind of a genre these days. Uh, people making use of that really just weird looking old style of 3D graphics back in the day. More, were these actually from the game? Girl. Hello, stranger. Mommy, can we burn the stranger? I like to burn things. No! Well, yes, maybe later, but no talking to strangers. Now that was very helpful. Let's continue on this way. The northeast side of town appears to be mostly a residential area that is of little use or interest to you. Please leave. You decide to turn around and head back to the center of town. Well, you know, thank you for adding to the extended Mordavia canon, I suppose. You really need to talk to Nikolai. I don't like talking to him in the real game. Good day. Have you seen my Anna? Hi. Hi, I'm Nikolai. Anna. Okay, we get the point. Let's head on in here. You're in a totally weird place. The sign in the door to the right says, Warning! Do not open without a TRAP device. The sign on the door to the left says, Key maze. Antwerp required. The sign on the left door says, Dr. Kratom's private laboratory. Entrance by a prior appointment or demonstration of superior intellect only. They'd fit all be locked. Hmm, perhaps a strange device in front of you can help. <laughs> uh, it's a 3D mo- that's great. This is great. This is really- 
Can't use the glory hole, very sad. See, they didn't have to do this. They really didn't, but they did. They spent the time to make that. Appreciate it. Alright, let's go on. <clears throat> this is the strange device labeled the Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor. Hmm. Must be the trap you need for the right side door to obtain an antwerp for the left side door. I mean, that's about the size of it. Oh, we, we got a steel key. We didn't have to do shit. This is already a vast improvement over the original game. Oh no, you've been antwerped. Fortunately, these are just baby antwerps, and we got a silk. Eh. No, I'm not gonna lie. I am a little disappointed that wasn't a monster closet with a bunch of antwerps in it, but I can't complain too much. And we get to skip that puzzle, which is already a vast improvement over the original game. You're in an incredibly cluttered laboratory. Flasks, vials, jars, and tubing cover every surface. Experiments are in progress everywhere. There are beakers full of eyes that all seem to be looking at you. Dr. Cranium appears to have harnessed the power of electricity. A contraption that looks like a giant ray gun points towards the operating table. The doctor looks considerably more like a demented wizard or mad scientist than a real scientist. How you doing? Quickly, Igor, the fluid! I must have the fluid! Oh, excuse me, Igor's coming to assist me. I'm more obvious, chief scientist and certified genius. Some keep calling me mad, but I much prefer Dr. Cranium, but despite what the towns people think, there's no such thing as magic. I do have a highly patented healing drink, though. You may take the things on the table. Okay, uh, so I think we can get some items over here. Well, we could, if our inventory wasn't full of crap. There we go. Do we take it now? You lied to me, Dr. Cranium. Oh, we got it. Never mind. Oh, okay. Guess we just have to be in the right position. Alright, let's get the hell on out of here. So, I am kind of curious what the uh, monastery is going to be like in this game. We got this fine gent over here. Go away, stranger! I didn't speak to you in the 2D version of this game. Why would I speak to you in the 3D one? Uh, that's pretty good. I had a chuckle. <laughs> you know, as you enter the northwestern part of the town, you hear the sound of a chisel chipping away at a stone block. A man is carving gravestones at one end of the street. Your attention quickly moves from the stone carver to the ominous gothic building in the center of the street. There is definitely something not right about this structure. A sense of great danger and hunger comes from near the front door. We're gonna fuck with it. Alright, we go in. Oh, bad place! Very bad place! Go away! You'll be very sorry! I'm already sorry. Oh, that hurt you, and you can't get in. Alright, I suppose we'll come back there later then. I figured the monastery would have many a great adventure inside of it. Me, Igor, me dig graves. Haha, <laughs> I fall in grave and almost die. Uh, let's come in here then. Well, that's not quite what I expected. I believe that's a portrait of the Coles. A very stylized portrait of the Coles. Okay, he uh, hit his knee on the door there. This place appears to have been an adventurer's guild hall at one time. Evidently there are no more adventurers left in Mordavia. The hall is badly in need of maintenance. Perhaps reading the adventurer's logbook will reveal more about what happened here. Sorry, I have a, a natural aversion to rats. This is cool. Kind of, uh, took a little bit of liberties with the adventurer's guild. I'm impressed. We got a whole bunch of crap. You sign your name into the adventurer's log. Look, I'm going to assume you kind of know the story of Quest for Glory 4, okay? Um, Irana sacrificed herself to feed the Dark One. Uh, Piotr brought her shit back to town. Uh, 
It's all very nice. Can we get a... It did mention the thief marks. Can't get that. By moving the hooks around in the order of... In the order, and specifically, you have opened a secret passage to climb the bookshelf and crawl inside the dark passageway. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, fuck. Okay, we're good. You climb down the ladder into a sea looking room. A massive door blocks off a smaller room in the rear. This isn't as dusty as the Adventurer's Guild, and the torches look recently lit. Cannot see any helpful markings in this room, so you get the feeling that there are more secret areas, you'll have to find them yourself. Ah, uh, so what order do we have to do this in? Uh, we did the... Okay, that was easier than expected. We need the dungeon key, which I'm gonna guess is over here, because that's where the thing is in the actual game. The, the, the cave key? Oh, well, that was easy. Ah, so you found my secret passageway. <laughs> you must excuse me. I'm not quite myself anymore. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I won't hurt you. It is good to talk to someone again after so long. I'm the only thief left here. Uh, you can call me Chief. I made a terrible mistake and broke into the monastery one night. I found a creepy basement, and when I went to pick up the small statuette there, I fainted. When I woke, when I woke looking like this, you can imagine my horror. Well, thanks for the tip. Um, okay, can we go around you? Oh, this passage behind leads out of town under the bridge near the gate. You can use it out of town, but you can't get back in as the door can't be opened from the outside. I wouldn't use it now, as it's getting dark outside. It would be out in the forest at night. A master thief knows all the secret passageways. I know a secret way into the castle. The worst kept secret in Mordavia. I feel like the game is kind of telling me. No, the game is deliberately blocking me from doing that. Alright. Okay, well, that was easy. I was scared we might actually have to think for a minute. Uh, excuse me, I don't play first person shooter games because I want to think. Alright then, let's go over here then. We've been over here. More weird people. Curse you, stranger! Now I've forgotten what I was doing before I was so rudely interrupted. Be gone! Okay. Who are you? Don't even think about touching my pumpkins! <laughs> Okay, we'll leave her pumpkins alone. Well, can I shoot out the windows? Uh, I'm just saying you could normally break those windows in Hexen when you played it. Anyway. I guess we'll go over here then. North was Rusty residential area. Okay, don't go there. You've made your point. Let's go and check out what's this way. Okay, same area. Don't go there. It's very boring. It is a very silly place. Hello, give me back. Okay, we talked to you already. Which is good. My voice don't want to do that no more. Alright. Can we go in the Burgermeister's? Oh, we can. You're in the Burgermeister's sparsely appointed office. There's a jail cell in the back, a set of stuff slid up to the Burgermeister's living area, the Burgermeister's looking at you, he doesn't like you, he smells like a butt. Nice touch, you put the stuff out, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. Currently. <laughs> that is actually kind of appropriate for the Burgermeister, I like it. He's always watching. Can we steal from him? No. Can we go in his back door? I mean the back room of his house, not any other implications of that. <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you. Are you just sightseeing or casing my place? I'm not going to read that. My voice is already tired of talking. Alright, the general store. Do I want to? 
This general store is cheery and well lit, thanks to the warm hearth. The first thing you notice are the cats, they seem to be everywhere. That's creepy. You fucked your merchandise. Take a picture of his O face or something? <laughs> what the f <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alright, what's in here? Not a damn thing. Oh! So you're the stranger in town! I've heard all about you already! My name is Olga Stelvich! We don't welcome strangers here, they bring nothing but trouble. All the same, please spend some money. Alright. Some ver Oops. That's uncomfortable. Um, this is very Ocarina of Time-ish. Nothing in the pots though, but it's the thought that counts. Alright, I suppose we'll check out the inn now. Ah, Maureen. <clears throat> You've entered a small but nicely furnished country inn. Stairs lead up to the guest bedrooms and a warm fire blazes in the hearth. The innkeeper looks rather grim and stares at you with an expression of fear and a Astonishment. Life in Moldavia has obviously not been kind to him. Three of the townsmen huddle together and keep looking in your direction as they talk. You suspect they're saying some not particularly complimentary things about you. I don't know who that is. Oh, no. <laughs> Someone went off to the Crusades. Can I, can I burn myself? Yes. Yes, you can. They thought of that. Honestly, it's just cool to walk around here in 3D. I'm Hans. Pleasure's all yours. I'm a farmer of pumpkins and corn and a person of great importance here in lovely Mordavia. Rumors. Okay, he just repeats the stuff. I be Franz, a wealthy garlic. I'm a thing. We get, we get the point. Do you have anything fun? To oh, God, why? This is the Hotel Mordavia. Rooms here require payment one week in advance. Thank you for your payment. Your room is the first at the top of the stairs. When you want food in the morning or evening, just sit down in the empty chair. We will do that. Does that actually work? Braids of garlic festoon the walls, sending their pungent aroma to the room. Judging from the menu here, the innkeepers are trying to use up all the garlic as quickly as possible. The innkeeper's wife brings out your meal. Tonight they're having your favorite... The night for your dining pleasure is traditional Mordavian chicken paprika. Um, delicately seasoned with locally grown paprika and garlic. Oh, that's great. Um, oh, please tell me he's not in this game. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> garlic braids festoon. Garlic braids festoon and lamp dimly illuminates your bedroom. The furnishings are nothing special, but the bed isn't bad and the room seems pretty clean. The window opens out to the back of the inn. A narrow ledge runs under it to the outside. Note to end your first day in Moravia, press use on the bed if you've not finished exploring. Do NOT do this! Otherwise you may miss out on important stuff. Yeah, I don't feel like I missed out on anything all that important. Does the window work? It does not. Oh well. I tried. You've survived your first day in Moldavia. You spend the next day resting and exploring over the town. Your every move is watched by the townspeople who do their best to make you feel as unwelcome as possible. The next night, you've barely slept before being awoken by a noise downstairs. You also sense that something, or someone, is waiting for you in the darkness. Both require investigation. Can I use the window now? We can. I don't think I was supposed to do that, but... Well, you know what? You allow me to do it. If the game lets you do it, it's fine. Oh, it's Pyotr. So you guys didn't see this in my uh, Let's Play, because I was a wizard. A shiver of cold comes over you. You sense no danger, but even so, you find yourself afraid. Something is near the staff. Uh, 
cute. I am what was once the Paladin Pyotr. The sorrows of this land are my sorrows, and I cannot rest. Thou art a hero, and so shall share my fate. Unless she ease the sorrows of this land and heal the pain. First, there is one for whom I weep. Alyssa lies in her watery grave, her heart broken by a lover untrue. Visit the grave of Janos and challenge his evil spirit. Free the Rizalka and heal her sorrow. Alright, so we gotta go to the graveyard. Alright. I can't kill the horse. Very sad. Alright, let's get out of here. The massive gate of this town is securely barred to protect from things that go bump in the night. However, we're what goes bump in the night. Oh, it's Katrina. And some jack o lanterns Also a very nice touch. It is good to see you again. You need to take better care of yourself, you know. It is very dangerous at night. I could never dare wander here without magic to help me, but I wanted to do some stuff. Please give me another weapon, that'd be great. She did not. I am disappointed. Let us move on. So I'm guessing that we're on a linear path again, and uh, changing it to night is actually literally changing to different areas would be my guess. I don't actually know this, but it is my assumption. Now we have to find a way to get to the crypt, and I do not know how to... We're in the northern part of the forest. Behind you, past the hills to the north, you can just make out the lights of the town. In front of you lies a worn-out trail to the cemetery. Okay, we found the right path. You sense danger in every direction. Hmm. Let's do it. Alright, we're back to the, the shooter aspects of the game. Oh my god. Alright. Even... Jesus Christ! That takes four blasts of the, the magical shotgun. You know, they're very slow. I kind of feel like we should just walk around them. It's uh, a bit more economical to just walk past them and try to... Uh... I mean, they're basically no real threat. actually is a little creepy though. I can dig it. Alright, we got ourselves some mana fruit. Uh, I am assuming you can swap to that, but I don't know the key to do it. Uh, you know, going in prepared as always. If you want quality, you should watch someone else. Oh, here's the ghost. You feel a chill go through you as you enter this part of the forest as if a cold wind suddenly sprang up from nowhere. A ghostly figure floats near the center of the clearing. Is someone there? Please help me, everything is so strange. I lost my way home. Can you help me find my way? I live in the town. I keep getting lost in the forest. Can you show me where the town is? Can we? No, we cannot. Oh well, too bad. Have a good day. Have a nice eternity. More Zams over here. Or Revenants, I should say. come across something bad here eventually. All those guys do is wear out your mouse. Alright. Yeah, that's going to take us to the crypt. Is there any more loot we can get in the area? Uh, there is not. Let's just head on to the crypt. I got the holy shotgun ready. We're good. You have entered an eerie and deserted graveyard. 
Strange moans wail through the trees, and mysterious lights seem to float through the air, flickering and fading among the tombstones. There are two large crypts dominating the cemetery. You have a bad feeling about this place. There doesn't seem to be any immediate danger, but it's a cemetery at night, and it's pretty darn scary. Moving on. Alright, got the normal Zams. Yeah, you would really imagine that would do more damage. Give this guy a full blast right to the face and he's still not dying. So, this one was Janos. So he, here lies Janos, faithful forever to his lost true love. Laid beside her empty grave, no effort could Alyssa save, she passed into a watery grave. Her body was lost, only remember her remains. You call out to Janos, and tell him he's a little bitch, that you know the truth, and you're here to set Alyssa free. Janos' ghosts come forth from the tomb, and he looks mad. How mad are you? Can you beat the circle strafe? Gotta, gotta switch back to my normal weapon now. He's got a lot of hit points. God damn, boy. Oh, nope, he's not dead. Drink. Alright, we're good. God damn! <laughs> I need my heroic fanfare after that. You learned the chain lightning spell. Well, that's gonna be fun to try out. Alright, do we keep going forward? A heavy stone crypt blocks off the thing, it's scary. Oh, we can't go that way. We cannot, so I guess we continue on then. You've destroyed the untrue lover's ghost and revenged the Rizalco's memory. You've also survived your first ever battle against a wraith. Barely. During the battle, you could feel the very essence of your life force being drained out of you. You are injured and weak. There is only so much healing potions can do. I beg to differ. You need to find a safe place to rest if you're going to survive this dark and stormy night. Really interesting job of trying to, like, uh, make the narrative fit into uh, an FPS. Not bad. Uses a different kind of, uh, mana. Also doesn't use the lightning sound effect from the game, but does use a Quest for Glory sound effect. I think it's the, um, Zap? I've been playing for a bit now. I don't know if I'm gonna keep going on too much longer. But I got a nice little save game going on here, so we might be able to pick this up later. Um, it's not a particularly difficult game, but uh, it is pretty fun. And admittedly, I'm playing on like medium. Um, it is just really cool seeing all the Quest for Glory areas in 3D. That's, that is really nice. And I admit, I, uh, I am fanboying out a little bit to this game. Very cool. And I will uh, leave a link in the description if you want to check it out yourself. You can pick up a copy of Hexen pretty cheap online, especially if you get it on sale. And it's a classic game as well. I do recommend that you play these games with uh, Z Doom or something similar that kind of makes them run a little bit better on modern hardware. That's also free. What else do we, what do we have over here? I'm guessing we're going to be going to Arana's Garden. That would be my guess. We're deep in the heart of the forest. The town is too far away to make it, make it back there in one piece. The wraith took so much out of you that you can barely stand, let alone fight all these evil creatures that surround you at every moment. Just as all hope seems lost, you catch a glimpse of a small pond and a beautiful glowing garden through the dense forest of trees to the east. 
Ah, yes, Arana's Garden. It uh, has a goth phase it's going through right now. Oh, no, I'm stupid. That's that's the fairy fountain. Very cool. Very nice touch. You have come to a beautiful garden deep within a forest. A stream flows gently around the central island. Feelings of peace and harmony permeate the area. Lovely flowers bloom throughout the garden, and beautiful music streams forth from the illuminated lanterns. To end this day, Mordavia, press use on the magical fruit in the center island. And actually, can we... Can we call it here? There we go, perfect. Alright, that was a fun little adventure. Uh, I'm not going to promise to continue this. Maybe I will. I, I will admit, I had fun. And it was fun to do um, something that wasn't an adventure game. It's been a while since I did anything. Kind of, Actually, it really hasn't been that long. But you get the point. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you didn't enjoy the video, uh, you don't have to let me know that. It's perfectly fine.